If Elon Musk is daddy, meet mommy. This is uh, Linda Yaccarino, and she is the new CEO of Twitter as soon as she assumes the role. She just stepped down from NBC Universal, um, where she <laughs> rocketed Peacock to wherever it is. I basically don't hear about anybody who uses Peacock, but uh, she is not only uh, an ex NBC Universal mainstream media chick, uh, but she's also a pro mask, pro vax, boilerplate WEF chick. And I'm not just saying that because uh, b b because she aligns with their interests. I'm saying that because she literally works at the WEF, the chair of their future of work. Uh, and she's the vice chair of advertising. And um, she will be the new CEO of Twitter. Because uh, all of the people who said that I was wrong, all of them, you know, I'll take my check now. Because I wasn't fucking wrong. Uh, links are in the description if you want to pay me for how much I've fucking won. Uh, but basically, uh, every single time that I said Elon Musk was on board with WEF, uh, every single time I said that he was one of them, and that that's why they selected him as a young global leader, every single time I've had people barking up my ass about it, uh, because, no, Elon Musk, Elon Daddy, he could never do that to us. He's one of the good guys. He's on our side. He likes cryptocurrency, and he makes vague comments that sound somewhat libertarian sometimes. When he's not supporting bigotry, fascists, unbanning, you know, avowed neo-Nazi Holocaust deniers like Andrew Anglin while keeping people like Alex Jones deplatformed. Because guess what? If, 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 if Alex Jones says Sandy Hook didn't happen, uh, that means that he's bad for kids. But if Andrew Anglin said the Holocaust didn't happen, uh, yeah, you know what? You know what? Let him back on. But anyway, uh, the point is that this chick is definitely just the elite's agenda, wrapped up into a nice little package there. And uh, Elon Musk was all too happy to bring her on board, um, instead of continuing to face, like, you know, dumb shit like accountability. Um, and now uh, we have WEF Twitter right out in the open, because I've been saying for a bit now that this would happen. Those of you who've been subscribed for a long time, you know that I've been saying for a long fucking time that Elon Musk was going to make everybody nice and comfortable with their free speech, uh, just like on Parler, just like they did that. They said, you know, come here, we, we're free speech, say whatever you want. And then a bunch of people fucking did. And then they were all wrangled by the state. And I said that this would be a very similar situation, only on Twitter, uh, where he would release the chokehold just enough on uh, the, these fucking people that they could just start saying shit, um, you know, running buck wild with it. And, you know, eventually they did. And he let it happen, and he let it happen, and he gutted the CSA uh, team, uh, meaning that there was more child sex abuse on the platform, uh, and he gutted all the features, and he locked certain ones behind paywalls, and he did this and that, and just constantly, constantly made it a worse place. He deboosted tweets that included certain words, including gun. I made a video about that. He deboosted uh, people who didn't pay him eight dollars a fucking month. I made a video about that. Um, you know, I'm, I've made all of these sorts of content on it, and I'm still right. And I've been right this whole time. And if you catch my streams, which I do uh, once a week on Saturdays, you'll see that I've been saying for a bit now um, that Elon is a honey, honey, honeypot. That he's just a trap. The whole thing is a trap. Uh. And there were a bunch of musky boys looking up to musky daddy who didn't fucking believe me. And certain people still fucking don't get it. They still fucking don't get it. And I think that's hilarious. So I'm going to talk about uh, certain ones of those uh, in this video. Strap in. Here's a uh, tweet thread I made. And in this tweet thread I made, uh, I linked a video poorly. A little more... Uh 
specific and not tweet after 3 a.m.? People in this room would, would like to see that. Um, It'll make them feel more I confident. Will, I will aspire to, to tweet uh, less ever after 3 a.m. But I mean, it, it is important that, you know, I mean, if I were to say, yes, you can influence me, that would be wrong. That would be very wrong. Because me, that would be a diminishment of freedom of speech. But I want to be specific about influencing. It's more of an open feedback loop for the advertising experts in this room to help develop Twitter into a place where they will be excited about investing more money. Product development, yeah. ad safety, sure. content moderation. That's what the influence is. Yeah. So, just to, uh, just to real, real quick surmise that, that's them putting him on a leash and him being like, no, but I don't want to be on a leash, uh, fucking, fucking WEF daddy. I don't want to be on a leash. And they're just like, no, you're going you're gonna to be on a leash. We're going to put you on a tight leash. And he, he knew this would happen. This was all part of the plan. Because now you're all supposed to sympathize with him and act like he's still your man on the inside. Well, he fucked you over for months and then eventually gave it to the W.E. fucking F. You're supposed to believe that this man is still on your side. I wouldn't. But I'm not a Musk fanboy. Alright? I wouldn't, but I have fucking standards for how I'm treated. And Elon Musk doesn't fit those standards. Never has. Never will. And now, he gave it to the W.E. fucking F. Outright. Directly. Because for a while there, he was trying to act like, no, I'm an outsider. They named me a young global leader. And then I turned down going to a conference, and then I said mean things about them. Uh, I must be against the WEF. I must be excoriating them. I must be an outsider. Even though I've gotten all my money from the government, and even though I've gotten all my support from uh, people who support government contracts, and without the government, I wouldn't have my uh, government surveillance satellites in the air, and my uh, space program launching from government uh, uh, launch pads, and my fucking um, regulatory credits to keep Tesla profitable uh, while I steal money from other manufacturers who don't do as much of what the government says. Um, I hate them! They're not... We're not on the same team. I've only gotten a huge amount of grants from them. You know, I hate these guys. These guys are bad. And people bought that shit! <laughs> people bought that shit! They lapped that shit up! And here we are. Here we are. We've got the future I said was going to happen... He gave control of it totally without any reservations to the globalist elite. I was right. And here's a thread about it because it's, it's a valuable thread to look at here. Um, I said, Lamau, Elon Musk's Twitter CEO pick, Linda uh, Yaccarino, is going to moderate this place more heavily and all the people who poured out of the woodwork to make this place a toxic shithole are angry about that seriously many such cases threat incoming and i said linda yaccarino is leaving comcast nbc universal effective immediately to start her new position asap some are quick to accurately note her connection to the world economic forum of course yo did y'all forget elon musk was a wef young global leader and then, people who don't <laughs> understand how to read post this kind of thing, saying she's the executive chair of the whole WEF, when she's only executive chair of the Task Force on the Future of Work, and the vice chair on the Advertising Council. Laughable. So, uh, ripped Twitter is hilarious, because people are claiming that Twitter 2.0 is going to be some censorious hellscape, and they ignore that that's what it's been for a long time now. He censored people for a week around Trans Day of Visibility. Remember that? And I uh, linked one of my videos here. And I said, he helped censor the Eliza Blue files, too, because his buddy Eliza Blue was under fire for endorsing adult child sexual conduct along with Thaddeus Russell, who was also doing that. Here's my vid on that, and I linked my hate with Harding vid. By the way, new hate with Harding on Sunday, y'all. 
be sure to tune into your new new Sunday church service here. Um, and I said in a tweet at the time where I went over these fucking absurd things that were happening where literally Bluey Anon here was fucking censored. And guess what their fucking reason? Guess what their fucking reason for censoring? Delete profile image because it has graphic violence or adult content. It's a kid's show character. What? <laughs> he censored people for a while now. So many people were getting censored during the Eliza Blue situation. So many people have gotten censored since he's been here. And so to act like it's some new fucking shit, it's not some new fucking shit. He's been censoring people. I was right this whole time in disliking this elitist motherfucking billionaire. But back to the original thread. Um, that since he's been CEO, this place has gotten worse for literally every minority, has been hostile to free speech against conservative narratives, and has also been a massively buggy mess. Remember the great Twitter down outage in February, y'all? Yeah. And, and I posted my thread here, which I think is fucking mint, but y'all can tell me if I'm wrong. Uh, either way, uh, I posted my thread here, and then I went on and said, Additionally, many people have reported to me that search has been broken, and that quote tweets aren't properly displaying, and trending pages have been buggy. These reports lasted many months. I had the same problems. Many such cases. RIP Twitter, though. <laughs> you know, because as if this hasn't always been a problem on this fucking platform. I, I, I posted a link to my thread here. I said, so, search has been broken for days. So is seeing quote tweets. So is accessing all trending pages. And it coincides with him blocking all accounts who don't show papers from For You and voting. And dumb rightoids are still on board the Musk train. Twitter is less free. And I said, the best part is how many right-wingers are just willing to trust this megacorporation just because they're allowed to be bigots now, in complete violation of TOS, while they funnel KYC information to a company that will use it to stab them in the back. I wonder if they've stabbed in the back yet. I wonder if the WEF being the CEO of this place is a stab in the back, or if they love it. <laughs> I said, the cool part is going to be when we find out that the state was working with this version of Twitter too, and that they released just enough information about the previous guys that people would get reckless with what they say on here because they think it's suddenly freer. They got to throw inconvenient people who used to work here under the bus, thus cementing the image of the new Twitter in the minds of dupes. Meanwhile, installing more convenient people and getting the other side to overextend with attached KYC details for a blue fucking checkmark. I've been right this whole fucking time! And pardon me for smiling a bit, I just think it's funny that people trusted this motherfucker after he was revealed to be connected to the elites in such a perverse, obvious, complete, and completely duplicitous to his free speech narrative way! Maybe those of us who've been able to see behind that curtain knew that there was no Wizard of Oz. You know? But just get back to the thread here. I said, Twitter has been locking more and more features behind paywalls, and more and more people have been leaving this place. <laughs> From the loss of functionality to the loss of reasonable verification to the vitriol leveled at them. It's hemorrhaged money! And I posted my nice little dystopian thing that I'll read to you now uh, with, with full fucking picture here. Um, Twitter, 2025. My Neuralink buzzes. I got a notification. I try to log in and my Neuroprint is rejected. Per pull out the authenticator. Demands biodata. Scan face and hand using OpenID's MOB tech. Accepted. Log in. Twitter is broken again. Elon Musk now demands 20 doge a tweet. That's the future, guys and gals. That's the future. Is this. We're going to slowly be drained into a fucking know your customer censored fucking AI hellscape. Right here, right now. We have it. That's all you need. So, I continue the thread by saying, 
<laughs> like seeing videos like this is actively hilarious. The idea that a billionaire working with a WEF chair is somehow evidence that he doesn't understand how it would be perceived. He knew how it would be perceived. He played y'all and y'all lapped it up. And I posted this video here, because look at Sticks Hexenhammer over here being a fucking clown. All right, everyone, this morning it was speculative, but now it is uh, actually the case. Elon Musk has hired Linda Yasserino, um, the vice chair of advertising at the World Economic Forum itself. Yes, you did hear that right. Uh, to be the CEO of Twitter. Now, um, perception and reality are two different things. The reality is that day-to-day -day functions, CEO-wise are going to be mainly related to advertising and business, as far as she goes. She's not going to be banning people uh, for their political speech. But the perception is something totally different, and Elon Musk needs to understand this, and probably should have taken that into consideration. Uh, because people are going to perceive this, because they don't often know what a CEO does, as evidence that the bad old days of Twitter are indeed, uh, after a short respite, back, and people are going to be mass banned for pedestrian opinions. We'll see what happens. Um, I'm not pleased about the decision, but, uh, I'll get into it more tomorrow. That's about all. Peace out. Fucking goofy, yo. How could he potentially think that this was unintentional, that this was an oopsie, that Elon Musk couldn't have known how we would be perceived? He knew how we would be perceived. And, 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 yeah, sure, he's gonna try to manage that public perception anyway, because he still has to maintain the man on the inside fucking bullshit image. But it's a bullshit image. It always has been. He knows he's not the man on the inside. He is an insider. He has been for a long fucking time. Ever since he worked with a guy on the steering committee of the Bilderberg Group to build the future of finance, which was Peter fucking Thiel. So let's be super fucking clear here. He knows exactly what he's fucking doing. Do not make any fucking bullshit about it. Anyway, y'all are free to stop pretending any time now that Elon Musk ever had your interests at heart if your interests even remotely aligned with liberty. He was always a member of the global elite. Always connected to and in service of the state. I was right. I'll take my check. End thread. And then, I kind of, I had an itch to scratch. You know, I had an itch to scratch. So, I went on some other people's posts, because some other people were full of shit about this too. And, uh, wouldn't you know... <laughs> wouldn't you fucking know, there's plenty of people who are exactly like this guy. Twitter blue subscribers and Elon Musk tweet feed subscribers after reading my thread about the new WEF approved Linda Yaccarino being appointed as Twitter CEO, calling for Twitter 2.0, and proving nearly everything I said about him over the years corrected once, yet again, they're just over here like, it's so real to me, damn it! <laughs> because of course they are. They can't ever admit that somebody like me was right. Basically, nobody is going to come up and say, yeah, you know what? You called it. Nobody's going to subscribe for this video. Nobody's going to share this video with their friends. Nobody's going to like. Reverse psychology, hopefully, but, you know, probably just true. And so I posted this. I said, uh, Brian Krasenstein over here is like, breaking. Moments ago, Elon Musk officially announced... Linda Yaccarino as the new CEO of Twitter. First, I want to congratulate her on the new position. I sincerely hope that everyone on both sides of the aisle give her a fair chance to really push Twitter forward. Second, I believe that Yaccarino is exactly the person who Elon Musk sees as someone who is in the middle. Watching the comments about her alleged hiring, I saw people on the right attacking her and people on the left doing the same. To me, that's a clear sign that she's perfect for the job. Finally, please stop attacking her until you witness what she does. Actions speak much louder than anything else. <laughs> Leave Linda Yaccarino alone! That's the vibes. That's the vibes. So, 
What did I have to say about this? I said, hey, Brian, realistically, the only people who support Linda are rightist. Some right-wingers accurately see her as a globalist threat to their nation. All left-wingers see her as a toady for the capital. Rightist, rich, and powerful have her six. And I said she worked for the World Economic Forum, and that was bad enough. She also worked for NBC Universal, which is also bad news for people against the mainstream. Linda Yaccarino is a mainstream establishmentarian, and that's why people don't like her. Elon Musk does, though. And Cat Turd over here, because of course Cat Turd has something to say about it, uh, without, you know, acknowledging the fact that Elon Musk has been a plant this whole time, Cat Turd is being nice and vague, claiming that it's not already WEF property. Like, what? Of course it has been. Of course it's been WEF affiliated. He's a fucking billionaire for a reason. He was the richest for a reason. And it wasn't because he didn't play the fucking game. It wasn't because he's some outsider. It's because he's an insider and he always fucking have been. So, Elon Musk was a young global leader chosen by the WEF. It really shouldn't be a surprise that a billionaire connected to the state capitalist machine would be connected enough to the World Economic Forum to give a company to one of them. Harsh reality. And then finally, uh, over here we have Ian Miles fucking doxin ass Chong, swatin ass Chong, over here doing the same sort of shit he did when he worked with Jocelyn. Hi, if you're watching this. Hi, Tim Pool, if you're watching this and realizing that Elon Musk has not, in fact, been an anti-establishmentarian. Hi, all of you over at Tim Cast, partly puppeteered by fucking Jocelyn. I see ya. I see ya still. But, um, he says, Elon Musk just announced the appointment of Linda Yaccarino to lead Twitter. <laughs> as the CEO to handle a company's business operations, dealing with regulators and advertising. What this means is that Elon Musk will now have ample time to deal with the actual product, the algorithm. As the sole owner of Twitter, Elon Musk drives the company's policies and its overall direction. At the end of the day, owner is the only title that matters in a business. The mandate for free speech remains unchanged. No one spends $44 billion on a failing business to continue the same practices that led it to fail. While I share some of the concerns many on the right have about introducing a seemingly liberal person to helm Twitter in this regards to free speech, I trust that Elon knows what he's doing. <laughs> he's just like, LOL, seemingly liberal person. She's a chairwoman at the WEF. And he's like, no, she isn't. She led a task force, which is a glorified group chat. She's not gonna fuck you, bro. Shut the fuck up. So we have this, like, you know, toady clown over here. And so I said, XD, y'all conservatives really left at the opportunity to defend the choice of a WEF chair as CEO of this free speech company. As long as Daddy Elon says it's okay, you'll allow whatever Musk wafts through the air. Also, how's Reagan's favorite rag doing? By the way, for those of you who haven't seen my videos on it, he runs human events. Uh, he, he at least at the time ran it, and uh, he was like the managing editor or something. And uh, he, uh, he, he, he was helping this guy look for like feisty MAGA types to run it. So of course the red-headed libertarian was in on that. Um, of course, all these, you know, super conservative, like, you know, fake libertarians are in on that and, you know, totally on board, like Ian Miles Chong here, who co-wrote an article with that, like, libertarian. Um, and, you know, he runs Reagan's, like, ex-favorite rag, because this would be the, the newspaper he would read every fucking morning. The only thing. Um, and so, yeah, these, these people have been establishment shills for a really long fucking time. Everyone defending him has been either an establishment shill or in the pocket of an establishment shill. And he has been an establishment shill and in the pocket of other establishment shills. Because this is a big club and you ain't fucking in it! And you don't get to be in it just because he says he's going to offer you free speech. That's not how this works. It's never going to be how this works. He is always going to throw you under the bus if you are vaguely libertarian. That's how this will work.
That's the reason he's always been working with people who would either eventually or already were on the board of the Bilderberg Group or working with WEF or all of these other fucking big-ass state capitalist conspiracies because he's with them! He's on their team and he always has been and I was right! So, with all that being said, at least give me the payment of a like, share, and a subscribe to find out all the more reason to smash the fucking 